Hey guys, welcome back. We'll continue with the book Python for Data Analysis. In this video, we are going to cover how to use modeling libraries such as stats models and scikit-learn. This is part of a multi-part series, so feel free to subscribe to the channel to not miss any videos. Let's jump right in. In the previous videos so far, we focused on data analysis using Python. Now we'll focus on data modeling, and we're going to learn about two different toolkits, stats models and scikit-learn. Before we do that though, let's cover a common workflow often used for model development. We'll typically use pandas for data loading and cleaning, and afterwards we're going to switch over to a modeling library to build the model itself. And the typical point of contact between pandas and other analysis and modeling libraries is usually numpy arrays. To put this into action, let's switch over to our terminal and let's start IPython. As always, we first need to import numpy and also pandas. After that, we can use pandas in order to create a new data frame with three different key value pairs, x0, x1, and y. Let's have a quick look at our data frame and we can see we have five different rows and three different columns displayed. We can also have a look at just the columns by calling columns on data. And we can see that we get back our index values to the three different columns that we defined previously. Now we want to convert our data frame into a numpy array to do further computations. And to do that, we can simply call to numpy on data. As we can see here, we get back an array or more specifically a numpy array. Now that we understand how we can use to numpy in order to convert a data frame to a numpy array, let's learn about a Python library that can be used for describing statistical models. The library is called Petsy, and we first need to make sure that we install the library before we can use it. Petsy is automatically installed when we install stats models. So let's switch over to the terminal and let's type in conda install stats models. And we can do that right from within IPython. Now, once we've finished installing stats models, we can create a new data frame again and then import our new Petsy library. So just as before, we're going to use pandas in order to create a new data frame. We're going to save that in the variable data and let's have a quick look at it. And again, we can see we have our five rows and three columns displayed inside of our data frame. Now we can go ahead and import Petsy and we can use the dmatrices function, which is part of the Petsy library in order to specify a Petsy formula. And here we are specifying the terms for our design matrix that we're working with. We are also passing our data frame here as a second argument and we are storing that back in our variables y and x. Now if we take a look at y, we can see that we get back a design matrix with shape five by one, so five rows and one column. And if we take a look at the value of x, we can see that we get back a design matrix with shape five by three, so five rows and three columns. And these Petsy design matrix instance are NumPy ND arrays with additional metadata which is displayed here at the bottom. And to verify that, we could go ahead and we can call sArray, which is part of NumPy, and pass, for example, variable x to it. And if we take a look, we can see that we basically get an array back with the exact same values as our Petsy design matrix that we see up here. We can also see that we have the term intercept here, which is a convention for linear models. But if you want to avoid having the intercept there, we can go ahead and add the term plus zero, inside of our function. And this is going to avoid to have the term intercept displayed here. And those Petsy objects can be passed directly into algorithms. For example, algorithms that perform ordinary least squares regression, which we can access through NumPy. If we do that, we can, for instance, take a look at the coefficient values. So now that we have a quick overview of Petsy, let's take a closer look at stats models. Stats models, the Python library that we just installed, is used for fitting many kinds of statistical models, performing statistical tests, data exploration, and visualization. And stats models covers, for example, linear models, analysis and variance methods, and we can also work with time series processes. And let's start out by working with linear models. There are several kinds of linear regression models that stats models supports, but there are two different main interfaces, array-based and formula-based models. We are going to work with both. So let's start by importing statmodels.api. And we're also going to import the formula API. Now we're going to write some code to work with stats models. And to do that, we're going to use Jupyter Notebooks. 
So let's exit out of IPython. And then we can go ahead and import Jupyter. And then we can go ahead and start our Jupyter notebook by typing out Jupyter space notebook. And we will then be redirected to the Jupyter notebook page. Now from the Jupyter notebook page, we can go ahead and we can create a new notebook. And inside of the Jupyter notebook cell, we're going to import both NumPy and Pandas. And then we can go ahead and we are going to create a random number generator using NumPy's random module. We're going to define a denorm function which accepts the mean variance and size and is going to return the mean added to the square root of the variance multiplied with the random number generated number. And we're going to run that for an n of a value of 100, calling denorm three times with a different variance each time. So let's run our code here. And we can then take a look at, for example, the value of x and taking a look at the first five values. Now, if we run that, we can see that we get back an array of five different lists. And we can also take a look at our value of y that we calculated here. So if we run this, we can see that we get back another array, again, with the first five entries. Now, a linear model is generally fitted with an intercept term, as we saw before when we worked with Patsy. And we can use the add constant function in order to add an intercept. Let's make sure that we import stats models API and formula API in order to properly run this. And then we can call add constant in order to add the intercept. Now, if we take a look at the result, we can see that we get the same values as we got before when we just took a look at x. But in addition, we also have our intercept here with a value of one as the first value in the various lists. Next up, we can use the OLS class to fit an ordinary least squares linear regression. Next up, we can call fit on our model and store that in results. And finally, we can go ahead and we can call the summary functional results. And once we run that, we can get our regression results with important variables. So for example, we can see the method we used, the least squares method, and we can see important statistical values like the coefficient and the standard error. Aside from stats models, we can also use scikit-learn for modeling. And scikit-learn is one of the most widely used and trusted general purpose Python machine learning toolkits. And we can use it for unsupervised or supervised machine learning methods. And it covers aspects such as model selection, evaluation, data transformation, data loading, and model persistence. And to use scikit-learn, we first need to install it. We can do that inside of our terminal, for example, inside of IPython. And all we need to type out is conda install scikit-learn. Now, once we've finished installing scikit-learn, we need to make sure that we import both NumPy and Pandas again. And then we can work with an example. So here we're going to use Pandas read CSV function in order to load a data set that is included in the book resources. We also have a second test data set that we can load. And these data sets that we import are classical data sets from a Kaggle competition that focus on passenger survival rates on the Titanic in 1912. Now, once we loaded the data, we can take a look at our training data here by calling head and taking a look at the first four rows. And here we can see the passenger ID of the different passengers in the Titanic, the information on whether the passenger survived or not, and further information such as the cabin they were in and the fare that they paid. Now libraries such as stats models and scikit-learn generally cannot be fed any missing data. So therefore we need to make sure that we do not have any missing data. To do that, we can call isNA to make sure that there's no missing data. And we can then create the sum over that. We need to repeat the same steps for our testing database. And in statistics and machine learning examples, such as the data sets we are looking at, a typical task would be to predict whether a passenger would survive based on features in the data. And a model is fitted on a training data set. So we're training it on the training data set. And then our model is evaluated on an out of sample testing data set. Now we could, for example, use age as a predictor, but as we can see up here, age has some missing data included. Now there are multiple ways we can deal with missing data, but we are going to do something very simple. And we're just going to use the median of the training data set to fill the nulls in both tables. So to do that, we can go ahead and we are going to take a look at our 
each value and we're going to take the median value for that and save it in a variable impute value. And then we're going to use that value in order to fill the not available values. So whenever an age is not given, we're simply going to add our median value that we created before. We're going to do that for our training data set and we're going to repeat the same for our testing data set. Next, we need to specify our models. We can add a column is female that is calculated based on the variable that's entered for the column sex. And again, we're going to repeat the same step for our testing data set. So next up, we're going to decide on some model variables, which we're going to classify as our predictors. So we're going to take a look at age, whether the passenger is female or not, and what class they're in. Now let's turn that into a NumPy array by calling to NumPy. And again, we're going to do the same, not just for our training database, but also for our testing database. And on our y-axis, we're going to take a look at the people who actually survived because we want to compare to that. So here we're going to do that for our training database. And let's just have a quick look at our training data set. So here we're going to take a look at the first five values. And here we have our three predictors. So the class that the person was in, whether they're female or not, and then their age. And on our y-axis, if we take a look at the first five values, we have the information whether a person survived or not. Now, with this being set up, we can use scikit-learn and specifically logistic regression in order to create a model instance. To do that, we are going to import logistic regression, which is part of scikit's learn linear model. And then we're going to instantiate a new logistic regressions model. Now we can fit this model to the training data by using the fit method. And we are going to enter our X values, so our predictors, class, whether a passenger is female and their age, and then the Y values from our training set, which is whether they survived or not. And then we can form predictions for the test data set by using the predict function, which is part of our logistic regressions class. So once we've done that, let's have a look at the first 10 values in order to predict this. And here we can see that in most cases, the passengers actually died. And then of course, we could run this again with other predictors and see which other variables might be more likely to predict whether a person survived the sinking of the Titanic or not. We covered how we can use modeling libraries such as sets models and scikit-learn in Python. In the next video, we're going to work through a data analysis example. If you haven't already, feel free to subscribe to the channel and see you guys in the next video.